Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 28. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, on the first of every month, we provide an update to this series. And essentially what we're looking at is the total cryptocurrency market capitalization and its relative positioning with respect to the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. Now, the reason we do this is to keep tabs on whether we're undervalued or overvalued, or if we're in line with where the current fair value of the asset class is. Now, remember, we can spend very long periods of time being overvalued and undervalued, but it's a great way to look at the market so that you can figure out potential periods to slowly DCA into the market versus periods where you want to slowly DCA out of the market. And it can always be somewhat counterintuitive. When the market's going down, a lot of people want to sell. When the market's going up, a lot of people want to buy. But you have to sort of trick your mind um, into doing the opposite. You know, when, when the market is undervalued, that's typically when you, you want to be establishing long-term positions. It doesn't mean the market can't go down more. Right, as we always say, just because an altcoin is down 80% doesn't mean it can't go down another 80%. But in general, if you if you had to think about, you know, where would you have if you had been in this market for the last decade, would you would you have preferred to be the person buying up here when it's overvalued, or would you like to have been the person that just buys when it's undervalued, even if it means continuing to buy on the way down? And this is sort of the you know the 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 general assessment that I think is worthwhile to make. It doesn't mean we can't go lower. And in fact, if history is any indication for the entire asset class, there's a really a high probability that we will in fact go lower. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But again, right now the asset class is coming in at 941 billion whereas the fair value is at 1.81 trillion. Okay, so the current undervaluation right now is approximately 48%. And as we previously discussed, we've had major blow off tops that we've seen a number of times. During the last cycle, we ended up getting two intermediate peaks. Arguably the macroverse uh, came to bite the bull market before um, it could go any higher. And of course on this channel, we have started incorporating macro uh, more macro videos so that we hopefully have a better grasp, um, you know, as we continue to navigate. And that's one of the reasons why based on the macro throughout 2022, I've reiterated many times that cash is king. And it's, it's difficult because, um, you know, when you're in a bear market, it, you, you always want to look around and, and try to figure out where the good deals are. But it's also worthwhile to remember that during these bear markets, right, like during these prior long downtrends, um, you don't want to be the, 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 the person that just sort of YOLOs everything in on, on every single pump, because then by the time you get to the accumulation phase, wherever it may be, you, you won't have any money left to put in the market potentially. And remember, the, the, the accumulation phase usually lasts for a while. I mean, arguably, we're already in the accumulation phase, uh, even if we do have you know further to fall, which I, again, as I said, I, I think is a distinct possibility. But remember, I mean, at the end of the day, um, throughout 2022, We've said cash is king, right? It's a bear market, just like cash was king in 2018's bear market, just like cash was king in 2014's bear market. It's just the same thing we've seen uh, in, in, prior, in prior cryptocurrency bear markets. But again, the current undervaluation is at 48%, which might have you wondering, where does that compare to prior undervaluation levels? And, and as I've said previously said, if you look at prior historic bear markets, normally we do eventually make it down to about 65% undervalued before we really kick off the next bull market. And we're currently still sitting at around 48% undervalued. We would need to fall uh, quite a bit more to get 65% undervalued. If you go back and look at the regression line, I believe this lower green band down here sits maybe at around 500 billion or so, somewhere around 500 billion. And again, the asset class right now is at 941 billion. So for us to get down to, you know, to these prior undervaluation levels, we either would need to go down to a, a, a total market cap of around 500 billion, or the alternative is, is that we just simply go sideways for you know over a year or something until we hit the green line, which is sort of what we have previously done. If you look over here in 2015, we, we came down and then we just went sideways until we hit the green line. Arguably, we did something very similar in 2019, although the intermediate pump was, was actually a bit more, um, convincing than the one in, in 2015. So as we get into, say, 2023, yeah, I, I do think we're, we're, we're likely in for, you know, a, a decent amount of, of, of sideways movement, uh, 
you know, from wherever the, the, the bear market bottom is. These are all important considerations, I think, to make as you navigate the cryptoverse. And look, it's easy to to get to get just sort of like where you where you only focus on what's happening right now and in this month and this week and say this quarter uh, and this year. But we do often lose sight of of where things are are hopefully ultimately headed now again i mean if you've watched the videos on this channel for 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 2022 we've said look high inflation is going to make the fed stay very very hawkish and and it does not make sense to fight the fed but after you know after these bear markets unwind um you know it, that's actually the most fun in crypto usually because you just kind of go sideways for a long time new projects get built people who who maybe were just spectators in the last bull market they get into the the actual building side of crypto and they create cool projects that they can hopefully introduce uh, to provide more utility to the cryptoverse. These are all important considerations that I really do think everyone can can and should make. Like if you have an idea, try to run with it if you can. Um, but of course, these are these are different ways that we can get there. And and the reason why this is the case is because because the our reference point is the red line and the red line as always, is is just a, a monotonically increasing function. So even if we were to go sideways, we would become more and more undervalued. It's like if you look at 2015, we just went sideways uh, in 2015. But if you go look at this chart in 2015, we continued to drop, even though the actual market cap was going sideways. And that was because our reference point, our reference point was continuing to go up. Okay, and that's how we ended up getting down to an undervaluation of approximately uh, 65% or so. And, you know, I think ultimately it's just a matter of time before we, where we hit that, whether we go down into it or whether we go sideways until we reach it, I think it's only uh, a matter of time. Okay. So that's just something to keep in mind as we continue to navigate the cryptoverse. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. I know during the bear markets, they're not as much fun, but, um, I think they will hopefully at least prove useful uh, as we as we get deeper into this bear market and as hopefully we come into the, um, the the phase where we're just sort of gearing up for the next bull market rather than constantly wondering where, where in fact the bottom is. Uh, but anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the content. As I've said before, you know, I think the ultimate goal that I'd like to see is is 10 trillion for, for the entire market cap of crypto. I think a lot of that is going to be dependent on how quickly inflation can come back down. If we can get inflation to come back down quickly, and if I, we, I mean, if, you know, if the Fed um, gets inflation to come back down, I mean, of course, some things are outside of their control, then then perhaps we can have another uh, another fairly convincing and fun bull market in the not so distant future. If, if inflation remains sticky, that's something we're gonna have to consider and um, take that into consideration. But again, 10 trillion is sort of the dream, plus or minus a few trillion, right? As I always say, as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion dollars among friends.